Hello guys, welcome to Omocha Reviews and today I'll be telling you the ultimate beginner's guide to buying and collecting Zoids in 2020 and beyond. Alright, let's get straight into it because we've got a lot to cover. Before anything else, it's important to first note that this guide will be covering only the essential facts and tips that aspiring collectors need to know in collecting Zoids. I won't cover any tips on painting or customizing your kits, but I will talk a little bit about snap building these things as they are the bare minimum requirement that you'll need to do as a collector and as a builder. Anyway, let's get started. We'll talk about the 4 key points in buying Zoids in 2020 and these are the following. Number 1. What brands produce authentic ones and what are the ones who produce imitations? Number 2. What kinds of Zoids kits are under these brands? Number 3. Where to get these kits and how much do they cost? And number 4. What do you need to build them and how the build process is like? Alright, now that you know the outline of this video, feel free to check the description for some timestamps in case you want to skip a few parts. Okay, great. So now let's go straight to number 1. What are the brands that produce authentic ones and those that make imitations? Okay, so we will talk about this by dividing the brands into two, authentic and knockoff. First, the authentic. If you don't know yet, Zoids is created by toy company Takara Tomi, and they're the creators of the very first Zoids back in the 80s and 90s. A quick history lesson here, Takara Tomi used to be two competing toy brands in Japan. Tomi was founded in 1924, while Takara was founded in 1955. Tomi created famous toy lines such as Zoids, Tomica, and Clarion, while Takara created ones such as Bidaman, Transformers, and Microman. In 2006, however, Tomi and Takara merged as a business and became one. Thus, Takara Tomi was born. This is why when you look for authentic Zoids, the brand Tomi is what you should always be looking at. If you're collecting motorized kits, you will see a Hasbro brand as well. That is also authentic as Hasbro is an international partner of Tomi and so they are allowed to sell Tomi Zoids under their brand for the international market. This is why Tomi Zoids have a Japanese language only while Hasbro Zoids have English contents. Now it's important to know that Hasbro and Tomi Zoids are motorized kits only and are targeted to anyone over 6 years of age. Again, these Zoids were produced in the late 90s and are being produced until today under the Zoids Wild series. Around the late 2000s, however, Tomi partnered with Kotobukiya, a Japanese luxury figure and plastic model kit maker. What's the significance of this? Well, this means that Tomi, from making children's motorized toys, has given Kotobukiya the license to create their own interpretation of their Zoids kits. Thus, the Zoids High-End Master Model by Kotobukiya was born. High-End Master Model, or HMM for short, is Kotobukiya's authentic line for Zoids kits that are not for kids, but rather for collectors who want Zoids that are 1. Not motorized 2. Better looking with loads of amazing detail and 3. Articulated, which means you can pose it in many ways. If you're having a hard time to absorb the differences, think that Kotobukiya created the once purely motorized Zoids kits into complex plastic models similar to a perfect grade or master grade gunpla. Okay, so now you know Kotobukiya. Again, to recap, you have Tomi, the creator of Zoids, Hasbro, their global partner who sells Tomi's Zoids in English, and Kotobukiya, the high-end master model kit maker duly licensed by Tomi. Okay. Now for knockoffs. These are important for beginners because some would want to avoid these while some would want a cheaper alternative. I personally didn't know the existence of Kotobukiya before and so back then I thought I bought an authentic one which turned out to be an imitation. The three bootleg brands I'll mention here are all from China, obviously, and they're the brands STK, BT, and Supernova. STK is an old knockoff brand who has stopped producing Zoids around 2012. BT, meanwhile, is still the active and more productive knockoff brand today. Finally, we have Supernova, who made a name for themselves by making high-quality imitations of Gunpla. Supernova just entered the Zoids market this 2020 with their first three model kits, the Ligers from Zoids Genesis. For a quick idea what to expect for these kits, here is a table of their features. As you can see, STK has better fittings but it, ha it has the poorest detail out there. BT, who is still active meanwhile, has better detail, almost identical to the original. In fact, from photos alone, you'll have a hard time noticing a BT version from a Kotobukiya one. 
but among the three, they have the worst fittings. You cannot snap build this as is because the pegs are so inaccurate, so you'd need to sand and trim plastic to make everything work. It's a horrible experience that a beginner shouldn't undertake. Finally, you have Supernova, who has good fittings and excellent detail. Among the three, Supernova is really the best, except the caveat here is that they only have three kits to date, the Murasame, Hayate, and Mugen Liger. Ultimately though, you'd know which is a real kit from an imitation once you touch the plastic, as Kotobuki's plastic is smoother and softer than any of the three brands. Speaking of kits, let's go to number two now. What are the Zoids that these brands produce? To understand this better, it's important to know the six Zoids anime where the toys are based on. Chaotic Century, New Century Zero, Fusors, Genesis, Zoids Wild, and Zoids Wild Zero. Let's first discuss Takara Tomi, the creator of Zoids. Obviously, Tomi has the most number of Zoids kits imaginable, from common ones such as the Liger Zero, massive ones like the Ultrasaurus, to unfamiliar ones like the Dimetrodon. If you want a toy representation of a particular Zoid, chances are Tomi has it across the six generations of Zoids. The catch only being that they produce children's toys only so they don't look as good as Kotobukiya's. Kotobukiya, meanwhile, has created HMM kits for Chaotic and New Century Zero only, skipping the less famous Fusors and Zoids Genesis. But as of October 2020, they will be launching the HMM Wild Liger, the first of the seemingly many Zoids to come in the Wild Master models. This means that HMM line will be going strong on Zoids Wild in the near future, which means Zoids Genesis may be out of the picture completely, especially since Kotobukuya only made three Zoids Genesis products. But these products are not model kits, instead action figures that are 1100 in scale. These action figures are another line made by Kotobukuya, called the Zoids Aggressive line, otherwise known as ZA line. These are the small 1100 action figures that you don't assemble but can still be articulated like an HMM kit. These are the kits that Supernova based their imitations on. Speaking of scaling by the way, always remember that a 172 scale is the standard for Zoids models ever since. Zoids are not like uh, Gundams where the scales vary a lot, so always always stick to 172 if you want the standard Zoids scale. As for knockoff brands, it's important to know that they have limited imitations. Again, here is the table of their model kits and their corresponding anime. As you may see, BT has the most number of imitations, but they're all just tigers and ligers. STK has more variety, having a Sykes, a Command Wolf, and a Gun Sniper, while as previously said, Supernova only has three Genesis ligers. In summary, a lot of Zoids generally have a toy equivalent but not all have a high-end master model one, as Kotobukuya doesn't produce a lot and would rather stick to very marketable Zoids that they know would sell in the market. Now let's head to number 3, where to get them and how much do they cost? Okay, to cut to the chase, a good place to get Zoids kits are AmiAmi.com and Hobbylink Japan. They ship their products from Japan straight to you and they have excellent customer service. You can also get these kits in Amazon, although stocks are limited and are sometimes overpriced in Amazon. What I would want to recommend, however, is to go to the website of Kotobukiya, link is in the description, and check the full list of their certified retailers. They have it all sorted per country, so just click on your country and go check them out. These are certified businesses that sell Kotobukiya kits, including the HMM. As a last resort, you may also want to join Facebook group pages or go to Facebook Marketplace. Chances are you'll meet a collector here who's looking to shed a few things from his or her collection. It's also a great place to find secondhand kits in case you're looking to save money for an authentic kit. Now for the price. A Kotobukiya Zoids kit costs anywhere from $40 upwards to $300, with a select few like the Gojulas the Ogre reaching up to $600. Meanwhile, Tomi motorized ones cost around $20 to $200, but there are ones like the first edition King Gojulas that can reach as high as $1,000. For the knockoffs, you can get them for as low as $15 to $30 no matter what the Zoid is. As with most collectibles, Zoids have factors that make it rarer and thus more expensive and desirable as well. As you've noticed, the price range for Zoids is very wide, and that's because of the variants. 
The first thing a beginner should know is that a Zoids kit's price depends on their rarity and rarity in Zoids is all about variants. What do I mean about variants? Variants are what you can probably consider as shinies in Pokemon. They're a more unique rendition of a normal Zoid. Let's give an example here. Kotobukiya has the Blade Liger AB, basically a plain Blade Liger, priced around 90 US dollars. A few years ago, they made the Blade Liger Mirage, a white and red Blade Liger that today costs upwards $200 easily. Another Blade Liger variant is the classic Blade Liger AB Bang version. Difference of this is that it has character figures, particularly Van, Fiona, and Zeke. Here's another example, a Saber Tiger Marking Plus priced around $60. Then you have here the Saber Tiger Gold, a gold variant of it that costs around $200 to $300. To better understand this, here is a table of the terminologies you'd want to keep in mind in buying a Kotobukiya model kit. Note that these terms are always indicated on the box, so make sure to check it. As you can see, Marking Plus means that a Zoid is produced again recently, this time with more decals, but with no special features from its previous model. Example of this would be the D-Bison Marking Plus. It's the same as the D-Bison Thomas version, but you won't get the figure of Thomas Shoebolts anymore. Repackage, meanwhile, means that they repackaged and fixed a few issues from the original kit. But again, they won't give you those special features like character pilots, unique weapons, and unique coloration. Example would be the Berserk Fury repackaged, as this kit does not have a Vega pilot anymore. Then you have the version, special, and custom. If it has any of these three words, it means it's based on anime-specific zoids or a unique coloration. This makes it rarer than a normal one. Example, the Gunsniper Lina Special compared to the Ordinary Gunsniper, the Genosaurer Bone Color version compared to the Ordinary Genosaurer, and the Command Wolf Irvine Custom compared to the Ordinary Command Wolf. Besides this, there's also the Zoids that belong under the Yuji Kaida series. The Yuji Kaida series is a different design interpretation of an original Zoid, made by Yuji Kaida himself, a famous Japanese illustrator known for his designs on monsters and mecha. Among the Zoids under this is the Sturm Tyran, which is a Berserk Fury and Geno Breaker hybrid, the Iron Kong Yeti, a white variant of the Iron Kong, the Fire Fox, a red version of the original Shadow Fox, and the Blade Liger Mirage, which I mentioned earlier. Also, the Raven Raptor, which by the way is set to be released for the first time next year by Kotobukiya, is under this as well. Lastly, there is the Kotobukiya Shop Exclusives. Kotobukiya stores are exclusively located in Japan and they always make a shop exclusive product, which makes the kit 10 times rarer because you can't get them anywhere else but in their very own store. An example of these ultra rare kits are the HMM Liger Zero Empire, the HMM Dead Stinger Hilts version, where you get Ambient and Hilts' figures and the HMM Storm Sorter Alabaroni, if that's how you pronounce it, where you get Rosso and Viola's figures. Now that you know the variants, here is one important tip to close this segment of the video. I want to talk about how much should the kit cost until it becomes unreasonable for you to pay too much money, basically for you to overpay. Note that what I'm saying here is my own experience as someone who both experienced the Zoids market in USA, in Japan, and in Asia in general. This is not anyway factual, but again, this is based off of my experience. Okay, I mentioned a while ago that a kit costs anywhere around 40 to 300 US dollars. Note that that doesn't involve shipping, and I won't cover that for now because shipping rates vary. I'll just talk about what it means to have a quote unquote fair price. To better get my point across, I'll give out three price ranges here 40 to 80 US dollars, 80 to 150 US dollars. 150 to 250 US dollars and 250 to 300 US dollars. The first bracket, 40 to 80 US dollars, are usually the Zoids that are the smallest in size and those with the marking plus and repackage labels, meaning that they are still ongoing. Example would be the Command Wolf repackage, the Gun Sniper Weasel unit, which will come out next year, and the Shadow Fox marking plus next year too. The Lightning Sykes and Terras marking plus versions are also under this. Usually, you know they're supposed to be in this range when their boxes are just the size of a woman's shoebox. 
Next bracket is the 80 to 150 US dollars. The ones under this are the ones with an ongoing Liger or Tiger build plus the older versions of the kits from the 40 to 80 USD bracket. Again, by older versions, these are the ones with the customs and specials indicated on the box. Examples again. For the ongoing Ligers and Tigers, you have the marking plus versions of the four Liger Zeros, the Blade Liger AB released this year, and the Saber Tiger marking plus. For the old kits in the previous bracket, the ones who should have prices like these are the Command Wolf Irvine Custom, the Terrace Jamie version, the Gun Sniper Lena Special, and the First Edition Shadow Fox with Brad's figure so on and so forth. Okay, do you guys now catch my drift? Basically, the trend here is that if it's an older discontinued kit with an item that you don't get anymore, like for example, the character pilot or some attachments like Lena's basket, it scales up by one bracket. Again, this is just my take on what should be fair. So the next bracket, 150 to 250 USD, will be for our larger friends and the older discontinued Ligers and Tigers. This for the Geno Sora repackage, Iron Kong Yeti, Berserk Fury repackage, Dead Stinger, and the Bison Marking Plus. Then again, the older versions from the lower bracket goes up, and these are the Blade Liger AB Bang version, the Bit Cloud Liger Zeros, etc. etc. Lastly, the 250 to 300 USD are for the ultra rare and ultra big Zoids. I'll go right into these guys the Geno Breaker Raven version the Death Stinger Hilts version, the Geno Sora Raven version, and all of the Gojulus types, also the Iron Kongs from years past. Again, I'm not trying to limit any seller or collector from pricing their kits and determining how much it should cost, but this is what I think is the fair price for 2020 and this is what helps the market stay competitive. Because let's face it, you don't want some random relative of Jeff Bezos buying all the kits for $300 because he's into Zoids, right? Alright, now we're down to the last item of this ultimate guide, and that's building your Zoid. To start, we will only talk about Kotobukiya kits here, because I already mentioned how imitation brands are in terms of build, and as for Tomy Hasbro models, a kid below 10 years old can build them, which is a testament to how easy it is. So now, back to Kotobukiya. For starters, keep this in mind. If you have experience in Gundam, then note that an HMM is significantly harder than any real grade, high grade, and sometimes even master grade Gundam. Some Zoids are difficult to do, on par with a perfect grade Gundam. Some are a little easier, but the catch is, unlike bipedal Gundam models, Zoids are animals. Large mammals like gorillas, dinosaurs, and ligers. Wait, dinosaurs are not mammals, they are reptiles. Sorry for that. By nature of their design, they'll have way more parts and a more complex build. Here's a quick tip. Generally, the best Zoids build-wise are the ones from New Century Zero. These are the Liger Zeros, Berserk Fury, and Shadow Fox to name a few. Chaotic Century Zoids have great builds out there too, like the D-Bison and Command Wolf. Some builds would really make you want to rip your hair out, particularly the Geno Breaker and the Blade Liger. Zoid's HMM kits have great fittings almost 98% of the time. The real challenge is when you deal with small parts as they are hard to manipulate. Another challenge is that Kotobukiya makes questionable engineering design sometimes with some of their older kits. So with this in mind, what do you need in helping you build an HMM kit? Well here are the only tools you'll need. 1. A hobby knife for precise cutting of excess plastic. 2. A nipper for removing parts out of their runners. 3. In some cases, it's best to have a fine sandpaper in case some parts doesn't want to fit. 4. Tweezers in case you want to apply the, uh, water slide decals, you'll need these tweezers. And lastly, this is optional. If you want to make your Zoid look better without painting, it's best to have a fine tip Gundam marker for panel lining. As you can see, you don't need to paint anything on your Zoid's kit. Zoids are fully colored and you'll only need to paint it if, well, you want to. One important thing to remember though is that the marketing materials you see from Kotobukiya are not the actual product because these materials are digitally produced. This means that their marketing materials look way better than the actual product and a big reason for this is that these are painted and panel lined which your kits won't be. So keep that in mind and temper expectations. Well. This has been a long video guys, but now I think I mostly covered everything you need to know about Zoids and collecting them in 2020. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to share this to anyone asking about Zoids to anyone interested in collecting Zoids. If you did like it, please hit like and subscribe to Omosha Reviews as we'll be making more Zoids videos to come. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!